Fabulous. Okay, welcome everybody to this afternoon's meeting of the Jones Library Building Committee. First, I'm going to ask uh, people to signify their presence uh, when I call their name. We're meeting as it has become our custom uh, virtually uh, as a result of authority granted by the governor and state legislature. George. Here. Sharon. Here. Alex. Here. Paul Bockelman. Present. Nice to see you. Christine. Here. And Austin Sarrett is here. And um, we are joined by our good colleagues from Colliers and from FAA. Uh, Anika, are you? Are you present? Present. Thank you, Anika. Okay. Uh, we have, we actually have no minutes to approve. So uh, we're going to skip right to uh, item three, which is the town manager report. Town manager, what do you have to report? I have nothing to report, actually. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Hey, just to say, Sean is, uh, uh, I think he's at the finance committee meeting right now, but he will join us afterwards. So with, with permission, we'll just skip item four and uh, slot Sean in when he, when he can join us. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Thank you. Colliers, Craig, thank you for coming. Happy to be here, Austin. Um, may I share my screen? It's fine with fine with me. All right. Looks like um, Angela would need to give me permission. Angie, you are muted. It has to be. It has to be Sharon. I'm just co-host. Craig is co-host. He should be able to do it. I just made you co-host. You should. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, here is our project schedule updated um, as of today. If I zoom in, red line is where we are as of December 15th. If I zoom in, the next big block of effort is the design development phase. Um, so what we have tonight is to show you a little more detail in that period of time. The design team uh, put together this handy um, work plan is what I call it, but they call it a design development schedule. And it goes week by week, uh, the activities that they'll be doing uh, and the meetings that they would like to have or the, the time frames in which they would like to have meetings. And then, so I took this nice graphically pleasing um, schedule and covered it with all kinds of notes and uh, information. But what I was attempting to do was overlay uh, the calendar onto this, uh, to their you know week one, two, three, four, and turn them to actual uh, weeks. And then also with the series of white and, and red dots, when I think um, library building committee meetings could occur, design subcommittee meetings could occur. And so what would be presented or, or decided at each of those meetings. So I took this uh, kind of rough, information and put it into a, a easier to read a milestone schedule or meeting schedule. And so that's what I would like to present for you today. Um, and this I believe was in the uh, meeting packet. So perhaps you've already been able to take a look through, but in short, um, we are in this kind of gray zone, the schematic design slash design development phase up through January 11th. Um, and it, that's one of the things the design team later this meeting is going to be presenting sort of like the latest plans, uh, latest efforts from this period of time we're in now. Once we get to design development, which if we look at my marked up version of the work plan, we'll be starting the week of January 16th. That's when we've got um, a whole series of meetings planned. Sorry, I'm wrestling with my controls here. There we go. So. One of the things that we heard from 
last week's meeting and, and, and before, or two weeks ago's meeting and before, is um, the, the gender inclusive toilet partitions um, and as a possible item for outreach um, to uh, reach out to the community and ask what uh, they think is most appropriate or more, most preferable. Um, and so we've identified kind of a, a period of time, so a few weeks where that information would be most helpful to have. Um, so Alex, um, you can, you know, there's nothing set in stone about these, but uh, it'd be most advantageous to the design team to have that input back so that they can take action on it, say by the end of January. Um, then we've got, as we discussed last time, a series of meetings that would primarily be a design subcommittee meeting, but uh, would also be posted as a library building committee um, so that a quorum of this committee can be present without um, running afoul of the public meeting laws. So that first one would be January 19th. Uh, I should put on here Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, whatever they are, January 19th being a Thursday. So I tried to keep most of these to Thursdays wherever possible because that works best with Feingold Alexander's schedule. Um, so that first Thursday would be reviewing the value engineering list, which was decided, I think back in September, but um, in sustainability goals also previously decided, but you know, kind of taking a fresh look at those, make sure that everyone is still on board with them, make, uh, make sure the design team doesn't have any questions about what direction they've been given, um, sort of flesh that out. So that would be sort of the first task. Uh, the next week, uh, and you'll see there's a, a bunch of weeks where it's, we're, we're meeting on a weekly basis. Uh, the next week, January 26th, uh, the design team would be presenting a preliminary landscape design. So that's something that I don't think this committee has seen to this point and actually is probably only developed to a conceptual level up till now, but they'd be presenting that. And actually I'm gonna flash back to here. So you'll see landscape, uh, the landscape design actually comes up twice. So that this January, end of January meeting would be the first time you folks get to look at it. But then um, about a month or five weeks later, um, the design team will be presenting their final design and looking for your approval on it. So end of January is that first sort of look. Uh, the next meeting would be in the first in the first week in February. Uh, the design team would be presenting interior design schemes, and then um, if and so that would be sort of like the, the focus of the meeting. But then also, um, if in mid to late January those VE list and sustainability goal discussions weren't finalized, then this would be our sort of last opportunity to finalize those. Um, in February 2nd, uh, which I believe is a Tuesday. Let me just confirm. No, February 2nd is a Thursday as well. Um, so it would be interior design and then any value engineering sustainability discussions that need to be happen. And then uh, the next meeting would be an LBC meeting um, where we would be looking to approve those design schemes, interior design schemes. So you'd have a, a a week to kind of ruminate on them, ask questions. We can coordinate uh, answers over email. And then uh, the design team be looking for LBC to approve those interior, whatever interior design scheme is uh, most preferable um, to this body. And then one last chance to talk about and tie up any loose items on the value engineering list and sustainability goals. Um, so now we're into um, Valentine's Day. We'd have another meeting uh, to present the exterior, uh, oops, I've got a spelling mistake here, the exterior design colors. So the exterior design materials have largely been determined uh, earlier in design, uh, also largely a function of the, um, the budget, you know, what materials the project can afford, but some of them have color options. So there's some metal panel, comes in a whole variety of colors. Uh, brick is a large component. Um, also many color options for the brick itself as well as the mortar. So the design team will be presenting something that they think would be appropriate, but would be looking for your input. Um, 
only a few days later, we'd be looking for the LBC to uh, give authorization on a final design color, uh, color scheme. Um, the next meeting would be February 21st, and that would be that final landscape design presenting it. And then a couple days later on the 23rd, looking for the LBC to um, give direction um, or approval on that. I, I'll pause here because I see uh, Sharon's got her hand up. Yeah, I, um, the Capital Campaign Committee is interested to know where donor recognition, like all the different rooms and signage and all of that needs to be decided by. Is that a long time from now, I hope? Um, and so that that would be in the um, would come would come in the form of of plaques and um, know, other other mechanisms for recognizing. So I, yeah. I presume, and Ellen can speak to it, but I presume that would that is something that can be done much later in the process. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and we can work with you, Sharon, on when we need stuff. Thank you so much. All right, um, so we've, I, I got as far as line item nine, February 23rd, looking to approve the final landscape design. Uh, then we have March 16th would be, uh, so now, actually, let me flash back to this. So the, the color legend here, design, decision milestones is this uh, golden yellow color. So you can see that is uh, all of those happen in the, the very beginning of design development. And that's so that the design team can then take that information and document it um, thoroughly so that we can get our cost estimate and then move into um, contract documentation or construction documentation. So if we get through, it's January and um, February, uh, then we can take the foot off the accelerator a little bit and go back to a more normal meeting schedule. We're meeting maybe every other week. So our uh, March 16th meeting, uh, at that point, the design team will have their 50% design development set. And so there would just be a reporting on the progress. Maybe uh, we show you the, the latest plans or, or exterior um, drawings. But at that point, it's just reporting on the progress, not so much asking for input. Uh, we have a similar one in, in, in April. We can report on the progress at that point. We'll be at the 75% design development phase. Um, and then uh, something I failed to point out about this milestone schedule is this graphic here, of the open circle versus uh, black diamond, open circle being meetings, black diamond being more milestones or submissions. So then the next milestones, we don't necessarily have to meet, but the uh, design team will be issuing the DD pricing set in early May. Uh, that package will be submitted to the MBLC, same thing in early May. Um, hoping for design uh, uh, MBLC approval by mid-May. And then um, this bot, we're looking for this body to approve the DD package um, sometime in the beginning of June. I, I put a, a window of time between June 5th and June 9th. I think that's just a one week uh, period of time but looking for this group to um, render a, a, a vote to uh, move forward to the next phase. Okay. Does anyone Paul, have any questions? Paul, you had your hand up. Hand down. Questions, Alex. Yeah, I think I mentioned this before, but um, would it be possible to, I think ideally with since we have the sustainability committee and we have the garden advisory committee, which are both made up of people with actual expertise to advise. Um, so I don't know if it makes sense to be posting these also as uh, joint meetings with that group so we can rely on them and ask them any questions we might have um, as part of the process. So like mm -hmm. item number two, where we're talking about sustainability goals, if anyone in this group has questions, we'll have a sustainability group there. Mm -hmm. Item three, we would have you know our garden advisory committee, which is made up of landscape architects and Etc. So um, I guess I just want to make sure that we're including those committees as joint meetings so that they're, they're available. Sharon, Angie, uh, Sharon, do you have any thought about that? 
Um, we sh let's talk. Um, uh, uh, so the committees, they're t the the members of the committees, their official terms ex have expired, and some of them don't want to join up. Uh, so we can certainly invite them, but they won't be as official committee members, if that makes sense. Alex, is that responsive to your question? Yes and no, because the the uh, charges of both committees haven't been met, so we clearly need to re-up and have other people. But in terms of what you're saying, I think that answers the question. But I guess let's talk more because I don't understand. Let's talk more. So I, I would like to have the people that we've asked to be the experts, be the experts in the room, because I certainly am not an expert on any of this. And we have people who are. And so I just want to have them available for when we have questions. Yeah. OK, other questions for Craig. So Craig, you have a circle under where it says number one, January 16th to January 31st. And circles seem to mean meetings. So are you anticipating there will be a meeting of the outreach subcommittee sometime between the 16th and the 31st? That, that was the intent as I was putting this schedule together is that somewhere in those two weeks, uh, a meeting would be held and uh, a direction would be given. Okay. Uh, could you, uh, just for those of us who don't understand some of the language, what is the DD pricing set? Great question, Austin. Sorry, uh, it's it's hard not to use. Um, That's okay. Just what is it? Yeah. DD stands for design development. I got that. What is the yep. DD pricing set? And then the set? pricing set is the package of documents that the design team produces in yep. order to get a cost estimate. Uh, okay, great. Uh, and the, just remind everybody of the role of MBLC in regard to the DD package. And so, so um, great question. So the MBLC will be reviewing the design development package in, at various stages, but um, ultimately they have to review the final package and give approval to move on to the next stage. So it's kind of, it, we need dual approvals, both from library building committee, as well as the MBLC. So if the library building committee were to have some questions about something of the DD package, depending on what our questions were, it might have to go back to MBLC if we wanted to change something or we didn't like something. Um, potentially, yeah. Okay. Um, but just sort of as an overview, you know, at this stage, uh, yeah. you know, after we see the plans tonight and make any final yep. revisions to it, but, but you know, prior to say January 16th, when we're kicking things off, the plans would should be mostly set. Great. Uh, already tonight, they should be mostly set. Great. Um, once we're in the DD phase, uh, can we reassign a room? Sure. You know, an office yep. could change to storage yep. and vice versa, but uh, we wouldn't be moving walls around anymore. And, and does so, any change in the design development package have to be approved by MBLC? So the MBLC, yes, wants to be involved sort of in each okay. iteration of the design development okay. phase. Um, the goal is, at, you know, kind of big picture as you start off in design, you know, you've got a broad range of yep. options. And then yep. we, over time, we're narrowing them down. And so now the DD phase, there are still opportunities to affect the ultimate design, but maybe not the layout so much. Yep. Uh, and then... Uh... Where in this process, and again, this may be for Ellen and FAA colleagues, where in this process does the uh, local historical commission and the state historical commission get involved? That's a good question. Um, part of the what we need to have Austin to go see them is yep. uh, pretty much set on what the exterior materials are. Okay. And so we see that happening in early in, and Josephine, correct me if I'm wrong, early in the design development phase, because we really need to get that mm -hmm. rolling. Okay. And uh, Will has been uh, Will has been uh, guiding us along and helping us to coordinate that with the uh, local historic. That's that's our first step. Okay, and again, just to. Because I know this question has come up. Based on your experience, 
how how long does the process of review at the State Historical Commission typically take? Well, at the I, I'll start with the local. It, my guess is Austin at the local. We're going to have two meetings. Okay. In um, it could be three, depending. And then this the state we do a submission. I I don't know exact. It's thirty to ninety days. I can check on what that is, though. I don't know exactly. Right, and again, just so um, that thirty to ninety day period is built into the schedule. In other words, we're anticipating that. So the 30, 90, 30 to 90 days um, would be moving in parallel with the advancement yeah. of the design. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah we, we, we don't have like a 30, 90 day gap. Right. Um, but right. yes, that 30, 90 days would, would fall within the design timeline we have. Okay. Uh, any any other questions from to Craig about these the milestone and the schedule? Uh, Christine, small. Could we have um, that FAA calendar with or without your comments, Craig? Send out to us just to have a second. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, yep. that one. Thank you. Was that not included? Craig, didn't you did you send that around to the whole committee? So just this no. So I just this morning I sent it uh, to a few folks, um, right. including Angela, so that Angela yep. could after the meeting post all of these images. Uh, but uh, Christine, I can send it to you over email right after this meeting, so you have it. If you would distribute it to everybody on the committee, I think we'll it would do. be good via email. Yep, we'll do. Okay. Any other questions? All right, Craig, thank you so much. Thanks for working on the schedule. It looks very exciting. Can't, cannot wait to, <laughs> to, to really get, uh, get into this at that, at, uh, at, that, at that pace and with that schedule, it looks great. Next is a report from FAA on updated schematics. Okay, I'll start and, and then <clears throat> Josephine's gonna take us through the plans <clears throat> and Andrew. Um, so we had a really great meeting with uh, MBLC. We, what we did is we took the comments that Sharon and her team had, we incorporated, the, incorporated those into the drawings, met with MBLC and, and Craig was with us on that too. Uh, got some of their comments, adjusted the plans. They were minor actually. We adjusted the plans and then met with Sharon. Sharon had a few comments. Um, but we're in a good, really good spot. We feel so we're we're really excited to show you these plans because we've Great. solved a lot of things. Great. So Josephine and Tony, feel free to chime in. I know one thing that we wanted. There's a lot of plan changes, right? So there's a lot of design things um, that we we are going to want to talk about. Great. Some, some are terrific, and some you may not love, but we'll go through them all. Right, so we'll walk through the plans and as Ellen said, I think maybe all of us will just chime in a little bit about some of the um, bigger elements that have changed. Um, and, and, and just, just Josephine and, and Ellen, yep. just to be clear, what is it that you're looking for from the committee? Good question. <laughs> um, Ellen, correct me if you think differently, um, but we would like pretty much everyone to generally um, be okay with these plans to right. move forward because this yes. is finalizing the plans and setting them for right. um, us to move on um, into DD come January 1st. Right. So and I, I just want to add to that. So the plans are at, they're still at a schematic level. So there is still tweaking, uh, pulling and pushing slightly. So there's adjustments we can make in the plan. So it's, this is not absolutely set in stone. So there, but we can't move young adult from the wherever it is now to the basement that those big program changes will be beyond us but i i feel comfortable that i guess comfortable maybe a little confident that we've got the plate things in the right places but we can do a little pulling and pushing but you're basically looking for us to sign off on these updated yes. schematics yes. great great right. yeah. okay um i Oh, I can share my screen now. Thank you, whoever switched that. <laughs> and I assume everyone can see my screen. 
So um, we'll start at the ground level and uh, move our way up. Um, the ground level definitely was one of the trickier um, moves that we um, had to work on on these plan changes. Um, so uh, some of the major elements, um, I think we've all walked through these plans quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just sort of start off with some of the major elements that we shifted in here. Um, and, and so the biggest move was that we brought the art gallery to the forefront um, of where the entry point is for this ground level, which is towards the rear of the building. If everyone can see my cursor. Mm -hmm. um, so the art gallery, uh, imagining that there's a couple walls of glass is going to sort of be at the forefront and also bring in a lot of um, a, a lot less security um, issues by creating sight lines, which was one of the NBLC concerns. So bringing this to the forefront, we shifted the restrooms to the south, plant south of the building here. So we sort of um, switched some things around to, again, promote the sight line issue that we were having. Um, with that said, our circulation is still pretty much the way it was previously that everyone had seen. Um, one other shift that we had done was um, switching or shifting the small meeting room a bit. Um, again, hoping that we can have some glazed walls to promote the visibility and the security um, concerns as well. We shifted um, the meeting room is in the same location, but we did shift the support spaces for the meeting room to plant south. Um, so the kitchenette and the coat room is now in this location here. Um, and the kitchenette can, can still serve um, the large meeting room directly. Um, but now also has access in the corridor if it needs um, to be uh, used for other functions um, for the art gallery or the small meeting room. Um, it, it's in a central location and I think um, now they'll be able to access it a little bit easier. Um, if Sharon is clapping her hands, that's great. <laughs> um, and so uh, we kept the special collections um, again just um, plan east here. It's just pretty much taking up the whole east wing of the building um, at the ground level. And we sort of um, rotated and shifted some spaces around um, the, the facilities and maintenance areas sort of um, got shifted uh, clockwise as we um, were trying to, you know, reconfigure some spaces and get the square footages in that we needed. Um, with that said, we still have um, mechanical space um, in generally in the same location that we had previously. Um, a couple other smaller moves um, is that we shifted the friend storage um, to the central location um, in the main portion of the building. And I think that pretty much covers most of it. We did do the rotation of the Civil War tablets in the special collection exhibit here that we had talked about a couple of times previously, but mm -hmm. we now finalize that. And um, we did create a circulation core here to get to um, the special collections workroom and the reading room um, directly from the other program elements of the special collection area down here. So that pretty much quickly sums up the major changes on this level. Um, if anyone needs um, for me to zoom in here to see it better, I can do that. And if anyone has questions on this level, um, feel free to throw them out now, I think, before we move on to the next level. Sure. Paul. Just being, oh. Oh, uh, oh, go ahead, Ellen. No, I just wanted to say that this, this had solved the biggest um, problem issue that MBLC had is that opening up, moving um, the gallery where it is and really creating more visual sight lines really solved their security issues. And so I, I think, you know, and I, I know Sharon feels comfortable with it and it, it should feel like a secure place for any patron down here. Okay, Paul, you're muted, Paul. Thank you, Austin. So there are three questions. What were the security issues that MBLC had? Oh, Ellen, you're muted. It's based on visual sight lines and um, kind of places 
um, that people wouldn't go to on a regular basis. They could be hangout places where we don't want people hanging out. So it's like what we, pockets almost. If you yes, know. good. Yeah, that's a good uh, description, Josephine. And and you've addressed that in this plan. Yes. Well, we have we have staff. Um, can you point out where the st staff is? There's um, well, so we have we do have ahead, a, a glazed wall at the library specialist area, which mm -hmm. would they really like that um, that move, and um, so that's one location. Um, then, of course, the art gallery is um, there, there will be a lot of glazing. So it's we had the restrooms there previously, which would have been all solid. Um, so would have promoted those pockets again. Um, but then we also have glazing at the small meeting room here. Um, and ideally, this is glazed as well. Um, and then um, we will have some um, openings in this wall here. Um, to connect these spaces as well. So you solved it by putting glass in, basically. So it, okay. it's Different. really the biggest shift is the art gallery yeah. moving in the, with the restrooms. That was in the, the restrooms. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Thank you. My second question: You already identified this as library specialist. That is a that's a glazed wall, so people can see in and out of that. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, and my third question, uh, third uh, third question is, is: Are there any exterior windows? I don't really understand. On, on the large meeting room? We do have windows on this wall here. I know it's hard to see here. Yeah, but um, is that where your projection screens are as well? But I, so, in, if I can chime in, I think, Paul, we may end up evaluating it and rotating where the projection screen is, but we have to, um, we may reorient, do a, um, a 180 with the layout, yeah. but this, and we'll play with that. Um, okay. Because we know we need to have, you know, we can't have too much light coming in. Yep. The other but thing that's a still, good question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, is, um, the other item item to add to Ellen's comment is we do need to look at the grading and where we can get mm -hmm. windows in the space as we are sloping down back there. So we just need to examine that in DD as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean if we can fit windows, and I think that's important. And I think you could even look at 90 degree on the um, mm -hmm. west, west side of the building. Yeah. And my third question, my last question is, um, is there, it, there's no direct connection between the art gallery and the um, large meeting room. So if there were a reception in a large meeting room for a gallery, you, you would have to go out to the doors and in the doors versus being able to migrate right between the two, right? Currently, yes. It, it seems like we're sort of losing an opportunity to expand both the large meeting room and to use large meeting room as an accessory to the art gallery who don't have any kind of connection between those two spaces. One thing, one thing, Paul, we did talk about that. Uh, there's a two, two concerns with that. One is that if it's a movable wall, acoustically, they really don't work. Um, you know, you can't, you wouldn't be able to have an open something in the art gallery and then having a lecture going on with this movable partition, even if it's closed, you're going to get sound transmission. And the, the other thing is we need wall space to hang art. And, you know, the mission here is we have quite a bit of glass on the two short ends and we're, we're still going to need some on that longer side on the corridor but and i think sharon was her and her team were not keen on having a, that connection between the two yeah my only concern is wall space i yeah. i love what paul is suggesting but i don't you know with the with those two ends being glazed i'm, I'm losing that opportunity for yeah. art to be hung I, I i wasn't thinking of a i hate movable walls but okay uh my only i was thinking like a double doors or something that you would mostly be closed but could be open so, i don't know it just seemed like if we ever have a large event we lose the opportunity but i understand what you're saying about the wall space mm -hmm. yeah, yeah great thank you paul christine uh, yeah i haven't seen any of this in a couple months at least and i can tell a lot of hard work and conversations are going on it looks good i was just wondering um where the civil war tablets went just wondering about that i've been out of the conversation for a long time and my second question has to do with the bathrooms there's only the open gender 
um, one section there. There's no family bathroom or anything on that floor for people to have an option. I know space is tight, just wondering. Yes, um, so the Civil War tablets is pretty close to where we had it previously. We just um, rotated the orientation of it. So it's right here where my mouse is. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. um, I can't see the, the words, but okay, thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so generally it's in the same, um, gen same general location. Um, and we did sort of touch on having a family restroom at this level, I think at the last meeting. We did. Um, yes, we, um, we didn't manage to squeeze one in um, for this round, but we can certainly look at, um, you know, locations where we could um, potentially get one in, whether it's staff or family restroom, um, not sure, but I'm sure we could probably find a spot to squeeze that in. <laughs> one, one thing just when I would want to yeah. point out is the core, the core of the, of the, our challenge was the small meeting room, the bathrooms, the gallery, and the mm -hmm. large meeting room that there's only so much floor space we can get out of that. Right. Um, it, it, and it may be, Christine, it may be difficult to locate a family bathroom there, but there may be somewhere else down the hallway that we can. Right. Christine. If somewhere on that floor, especially if it's closed off in the evening for events, mm -hmm. I guess that would be ideal to give okay. people the options. Right. Um, and just a war tablet room now that I see that. Are those doors, window? I see the door, but windows just, are we still planning on putting them on the walls? And is there enough wall? And, and is anything else going in that room? Or is it just going on the walls? I think oh. we need more program information on that, don't we, Josephine? That's correct. Yeah, I don't think that was decided whether it's going on right. the walls or not. Um, the door you see here is access to the to the room um, from uh, the main circulation. Great. Uh, Craig? Thanks, Austin. So on that topic, I think when we last met with the uh, Civil War tablet group, um, there was talk about you know, making it, um, you know, what that space wanted to be and how it would be arranged. And um, at that time, the design team asked for, you know, further input. And I think that that group is going to go away, sort of talk amongst themselves, come up with a plan, sort of like a, almost like a museum curation type of plan, and then feed that information back to the design team. And then the design team will incorporate what's needed to uh, support that. So if that process hasn't uh, begun, uh, now would be a great time to do that. Sharon? I'll, I'll reach out to Dave Zomack. Great. May I ask a question about the flow on this floor? So I, I really like what you've done. I think it's great. But if I, if I was coming in the back door, but I didn't want to go to the meeting room and I didn't want to go to the museum, uh, how... I, I see what the flow is, but how much of a distance is there between the back entrance and the um, where the gallery wall will be? We could probably uh, back yeah. entrance gallery wall. Yep, yeah, right there and the yep. gallery wall. No, no, no. Sorry. Go back. Go back to the back entrance. Yep. The, right in front of you, where the glazed wall is going to be. Yeah. How much of a distance is there? Um, Andrew could probably spit that off on the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> Eight feet. Approximately, probably. Yeah. yeah. It's eight feet. So the only question that I have is the, the feel of coming. I, I don't want to go to those rooms. I want to go up the stairs. And what I confront in front of me is this, this glass wall. And um, again, it may not be an, it may not be an issue um, at all, but I assume that a lot of when the library's open, that back entrance is going to be used for people who want to you know want to go upstairs. Um, and I, I I wonder whether you have any thoughts about that. What we're not showing here is is a set of doors. Josephine, show 
um austin yes right there where because this has to become and we apologize for not having that yeah uh, we have to create a vestibule for per the energy code so you uh -huh. would come into this vestibule so that dimension austin a yep. yep. we adjust that we can look at that okay but it's going to be a vestibule like entrance yeah. Yeah. okay yeah it got lost right. somewhere in the mix yeah all right that's help, help, helpful to know I would suggest we actually increase the width. It is a the rear entrance could become a pretty important primary entrance I think. for all hours. And I think to your point, Austin, just by sliding that gallery down a little bit, as you see, we have room to the south of that. Yeah. yeah. We can easily move this whole gallery down a couple of feet without harming the layout. And I think it, to your point, it's going to improve the entrance. Yeah. Well, that's my 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 concern is that we recognize that when the library is open, that back entrance is going to be used a lot. And we want to make sure that it's mm -hmm. a kind of easy flow into the rest of the library. Okay. Paul Bockelman. Yeah, I was just, I, I really appreciate you pointing that out, Austin, because I, I think that's a great solution, Tony, to move that art gallery down. I think that where it says vestibule, that that is going to be a high gathering place because people, you know, after an event, they stand out there, put on their coats or whatever, they start to get and they talk. So having a little bit more room where that's not just a, hallway would be really helpful i think in terms of circulation okay all right any other questions on the ground floor and again i think that the work that you've done here is really remarkable and, and really great and i love actually the location of the civil war tablets in relationship to the art gallery i think that's really really wonderful all right you want to go up a level great let's go up all right so we're at the first floor. Yeah. Um, so um, you'll see that um, the biggest change here from the colors you probably remember last time is what's happening with the purple. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so um, to not necessarily walk through the entire um, floor plan, um, the biggest change is that we did shift the young adult. That was the biggest request um, per staff comments, um, shifting the young adult to the second floor. If you recall, the young adult area used to be yeah. in this space here. And um, that's in the double height um, uh, space with the um, barrel vaulted ceilings. Um, and it's a very, um, it's a very nice room um, that is now sort of more dedicated to um, the adult fiction space. And we managed to squeeze the adult fiction all on level one. So, all of the purple that you see here is all of the adult fiction collections and seating. By the way, um, just for just for the sake of those of us that are amateurs, is squeeze an architectural term? It is absolutely. We use it every day. <laughs> well, uh, the reason why I, I I meant it kind of I I I don't want to come away with the impression that things have gotten squeezed. Right. I no. think you mean that you've managed to place them. We managed to place them, but Sharon did do a good job at squeezing down her collections. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, keep going. Um, but and yes, sorry, one sorry. thing the one thing though we also did was um, we had some locations that were three stacks high, and we made them five, which is you know we could even go to seven, but we thought we'd go to five, so that helped redu reduce the number of yep. actual Great. bookshelves. Great, right. terrific. So, yeah, yeah just with with the reduction of um, the collections and um, some, you know, some other shifts, um, it does all fit here um, very nicely. And you'll see um, that we, we do, as Ellen mentioned, have um, a couple different heights for the shelving, um, which can also be uh, rearranged. Um, what we did here was um, the space is, is really special. So we wanted to sort of make it more special than just have shelving um, thrown in there. So what we did was create a reading room here. <laughs> Um, and we'll show you um, a rendering of that later. Um, right. So, so that was the biggest shift here. Um, we did um, move around a couple of other um, elements in the main space, um, but um, not too many major shifts. Um, we connected the um, circulation desk with um, the main circulation desk with the youth circulation mm -hmm. um, in this area here. Um, and that was actually, um, I think, comments from both MBLC and staff comments. So I think this is going to be a good move for everyone. Um, and having that connection is important. Um, uh, another um, element that we um, shifted around here was just uh, locations of self-checkout um, 
and a couple of other elements just to uh, open up this main stair, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be a centerpiece here of this of this space. Um, and uh, I think we improved the flow of um, circulation in the space as well by um, some of the shifts that we did do. Um, and um, I think that pretty much covers the more of the major changes. A couple things in the um, circ work area that we added back, which were missing previously, was the safe. Um, and a fireplace that's there right now. Mm -hmm. So we sort of indicated where that is. Um, yep. it, it changes the circ work area a bit, but, um, but we'll, you know, um, get more into that in DD um, and um, how that's all going to work with the material return. Great. Questions on the, thank you, Josephine. Question, uh, are you done on the first floor, Josephine? I think so, yeah. Uh, questions on the first floor, Paul Bachman. So that area you were just highlighting with the fireplace, what is that? Is that that's staff space and not open space? So this is all the circ work area slash material return. This was okay. all one open space previously, okay. um, sort of was split in the middle um, with these um, historic elements that we brought back. Um, we do have a connection um, that enables you know the pass through um but it is right now these items are um breaking the space so the those fireplaces are that's in, st in staff area it's not open to the public to see right that's correct yeah okay my second question is up uh, i don't really can't really read it that where the gears are in the middle um the pink area that there okay. yeah <laughs> um is that like the cafe or something like that? It is, yes. It's the cafe gathering area. So is the intention to have um, like coffee service or is that a bring your own type thing? Is there going to be a co Is there going to be a, somebody selling coffee there? No, it's, it's bring your own. Okay. Um, you know, later on down the line with a different library director and different staff, you know, the opportunity, the flexibility is there if somebody wants to come in and, and sell stuff. But when we start now. So I'm glad you're saying that because someone has said, oh, they're building a cafe into the library and it's going to rob the businesses downtown. So that's good. Um, that's that's great. And, and the stairwell right next to it, that's an open stairwell. You said it's a design feature. That's kind of an exciting thing that you're going to feature. Yep. Yes, it's an open staircase. We're so, assuming right now glass railings, but, you know, in DD, we'll, we'll get that squared away. But it is an open grand stair. Okay, thank you. From there, you can see the sawtooth roof. Roof. You 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 can. You used to be able to. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's, I didn't. I, so, um, I just want to ask a question about the visibility of the the main circulation desk from the front entrance. So when I walk in that front entrance again, there's a kind of long way that I go uh, before I come across the circulation desk. And I take it that uh, I, I would imagine you're gonna, we're gonna deal with this with signage of some kind. So oh, when, that's I, right. when I come in, I'm gonna see some sign that's a circulation desk here or something like that. We'll yes. have, yep, we'll find, have, we're yep. finding signs. Right, and we, you have preserved uh, the wonderful staircase right at that entrance. Mm -hmm. um yep. i i see that that is um that's really great um can you uh, you're going to show us a rendering of the reading room as you said said later on yes okay Towards all right then i'll hold, I'll hold my question for the, for that other sure. questions on the first floor uh paul bachman um yeah so i guess that's this is the main entrance where it says the vestibule right Yes. And so our main entrance is you walk in, you're looking at a brand new building and you're walking through this sort of tunnel before you get to the big open space. Is that sort of the feel we're going to present to people? I wonder if that's what we really want to be saying to people. I wouldn't describe it as a tunnel. I would describe it as a gracious hallway. <laughs> okay. But I, I, I kind of mean that. I mean, in a sense, right now when we walk in, 
you know, there's a beautiful stairway. There's art on the wall. But it is a. It does look like. I mean, is it any longer than what we have now? No, nope, exact same. Right. But thankfully, and now you'll be able to see the circulation desk as you walk in. Yes. Uh, you know, once it's renovated, it's you know, Paul. This it's the 1928 building that we have to preserve. So the the gracious hallway will remain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other other. Other questions? All right, so let's go up a floor. Okay. Second floor. Here we are. Um, so again, hitting the major elements, um, you'll see that this is no longer all purple up here mm -hmm. um, and the YA has shifted up. Yep. So um, we have now introduced um, YA in the new wing um, in the addition of the second floor. Um, it's here in the southern portion of the addition. Um, we are introducing um, glass walls, so mm -hmm. we can sort of still keep somewhat of an open feel at that upper floor, mm -hmm. um, understanding that this is um, it's going to be a little bit more closed off than what everybody's yeah. been seeing, you know, yeah. for the, the past few years. Um, and so we do have, again, renderings for you to see, um, right. to have an understanding of what that feels like. Um, so uh, shifting, sh shifting gears here, um, we did get all the adult nonfiction on this level. And as you can see, it all fits very comfortably. Um, the shelving and all of the furniture arrangements. Um, so we introduced a new bathroom core which is um, right along here. It's the gray core that you see that's sort of um, breaking up the YA and the adult nonfiction space. Um, and we, um, we shifted some of the furnishings around as well from what you had seen previously. Um, and just a couple other shifts that happened here is that we brought the ESL to this location mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Um, and we shifted the administrative suite into the space here. So those were the other two big shifts on this floor. Um, I think the other items pretty much have remained where you had seen them previously. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure, Ellen, if you have any other comments on this floor. No, I think you covered it, Josephine. I, I, it, was a, it was quite a shift. But again, you know, we work with Sharon, we work with MBLC, we seem to get things settled where everybody is happy. Yeah, can I, I just say, I just want to say, so FAA, they, y'all knocked it out of the park with this version. This is genuinely, Great. functionally speaking, this is the best set of, of plans uh, layout that we've seen since the beginning. Um, in this in this sense, uh, time has been good to us uh, because we have yes. seen a lot of different versions, but it's really great, been great. You guys have been so patient with us and I, it's, it's going to make a difference, you know, when we, when we do the big reveal. So thank you. Great. Great. Thanks, Sharon. Can you just remind us of an issue that we've talked about before? And that is the question of accessibility. So the elevator. Sure. sure. Yep. Um, so we um, still have um, two different uh, levels here on level two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have these stairs um, yep. that indicate that change there. Yep. We do have the elevator that hits both um, this level and this mm -hmm. level. And we yep. had introduced this ramp here. Um, so you would come around and go up the ramp to get to this level. Okay. Or I, if I'm in that elevator, I can go out the back door directly to that level. Yes, this elevator will hit both both levels. It'll be a, a front and rear elevator, so it will have multiple um, stops on it. So again, just so I'll understand, there'll be like level two and then level two A. I mean, will there be different buttons? Correct. So okay. it it will be like a two and two A if we keep yep. it just you know in simple simple terms. Yes, it'll be a two and two A. Right. Okay, yeah, Christine. I have two questions. One, um, 
I'm just not clear, is the bathrooms, is it straddled on both sides by the youth services, you know, on the yes. upper side, that orange? So is there a separation, like it, there's like two rows of youth books and then it goes right into nonfiction that, or? That was a request by Sharon and Sharon had great logic on why. Do you want to explain the logic on that, Sharon? Yeah, so, um, well, to be fair to me, I didn't ask that the bathrooms be put in between, but I understand oh, I understand <laughs> why you're doing this. So what, what the teen librarian came up with, our amazing Cecilia Juzik, so teen spaces, you really try very, very hard to limit them to teenagers. But if you keep the collection in the teen room, mm -hmm. then it, it stops adults and younger children from, from accessing it. So here is the same amount of square footage uh, dedicated to teens, but we took the collection out of the actual walled in space. That way everybody can access the teen collection, um, but it's right next door to the, you just know that room is meant for teenagers. If you're my age, you don't belong in there unless you're shelving the books. Christine. Okay. Um, and then the other one is where the shift in the floor happens. You've got mm -hmm. stairs and then I see mm -hmm. a ramp and then mm -hmm. there's just this blue square area. Is that fence like a, a railing or? Yes. And do you have to have stairs and a ramp? It just seems like so much going on there. No, we don't. We don't want the ramp uh, from an architectural point of view because it takes up square footage. Um, MBLC hates ramps, uh, but it was a request by the committee to have the ramp. Um, we can do it without the ramp. We can, I'm sorry, we can do it without the ramp or without the stairs. Um, we think we need one or the other. Uh, we prefer the stairs from an architectural standpoint, but you know, you it's your library. So whichever you prefer right now, we have two. We don't have to decide that today. I think we have some we'll have some renderings for you as we go into DD that can help, uh, you know, the group's decision on, on that. But I just, it, it, Christine, I just wanted to just ask one quick question about this, if I may. Is that okay, Christine? Sure. Um, and, and just following up on Christine's question about this, uh, doesn't kind of principle of universal design say you wouldn't have stairs if you have a ramp? I mean, it signals something, right? No, well, we if we usually have both, so it allows those who don't need to use the ramp. No, no, no. But my point. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, see, what you just said is what I want us to think about. Is there two categories of users? There's then people who need to use the ramp, and then mm -hmm. people who don't. And one possibility is to say everybody uses the ramp. Yes. And that way, you're not signaling like you've got two. I mean, if 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 this is what we end up doing, you've got two categories. If if it's a matter of getting up of this, why don't we all use the same thing? That's a preference, you know, personal preference. And again, it's for your group to decide. Okay. If personally, I have the choice, I'm taking the stairs because it's shorter. Uh, I'm thinking about accessibility, and when I'm calling universal design, uh, okay. which is just uh, why, I mean, again, it's up to the committee, why have this, that you, people who are not in wheelchairs, you can use the stairs. And then we've got this thing for people who are in wheelchairs, as opposed to saying, we actually have one thing, one way that goes up these things, mm -hmm. and everybody uses it. Sorry, Christine. So um, I was wondering how wide that ramp is and then there's this extra space and you wouldn't run it all the way across because it just seems like wasted it's space. The, Josephine, do you want to just walk through the ramp? There's there's a landing and et cetera. It's, right. Okay. So it's just code requir requirements for a ramp. You have to have a certain amount of space at the bottom mm -hmm. and, and at the top. So you would um, come into the space, which would not be ramped. And then the ramp would start here. And so the top landing would be here. So basically you're getting a top and bottom landing at this layout. five feet in width to answer your question. And that's the minimum. That's the minimum. And so there'll be a rail or um a yes. guard across that 
right. there's a space for the landing, then you have a railing, and then there's a space for the stairs. Um, and can you refresh our memory on how high this area is we're talking about and how many steps exactly are there? We're currently showing three risers. Okay. And yeah, we're so approximately- 21 inches. Oh, yeah. sorry, just go ahead. No, that's okay. <laughs> and how long is the ramp to answer Christine's question? It would be 21 times 12. 21 feet. 21 feet. Yeah. So it's not, it's, it, it, it is what it is. And I, I, I don't, I think we need to study it a little bit more for you right. guys. Okay. I, I, to your point off, Austin's a good one on the QT. We looked at just a ramp, but we can show you that in DZ. Okay, great. Christine. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Bachman. So that, that, that's this is a very interesting conversation. And just to be clear, you you would say we don't need the ramp because we already have the elevator that could go up those twenty. That's correct. Inches. Yes. If that's you were correct. down below, you'd say, "Oh, I want to go up there. I'll take the elevator twenty one inches." And right. If I were in a wheelchair or if I had a, a carriage or something like that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and I think the thing also to keep in mind, uh, to Austin's point <clears throat> about people in wheelchairs, but it's not. It's people on crutches or someone right, who has right, trouble right. with stairs or mm -hmm. someone who has visually impaired. So it's it can serve a you know a variety of people. Yeah. And Paul. And, and this and the, and the ramp has to initiate from the location where it is. It can't move farther to the top of the page, for instance, right? Because that's where the division is. Mm -hmm. okay. So it has to be I, yeah. it has to be oriented the way it's oriented. We're trying to, um, the footprint that we have is at the height that it's at mm -hmm. to sort of raise it up to get better ceiling height at the first floor. So the more space that we have that's at the upper level, the yeah. better off we are at the lower level. Um, so we were trying to just keep it tight to that axis because of that. Um, so, I mean, it can play around a little bit, but mm -hmm. if we move I, it page north, then that will be, imp that yeah. will impact the the ceiling below. I mean, when I first looked at this and heard that we didn't need the ramp because of the elevator, I thought, well, why not? We why don't we use the stairs as a a, a design device? It's something that's really attractive that we sort of emphasize. And I wonder, is it just something for you to think about? Not to respond to today is I wonder mm -hmm. if there's some some way we can use a ramp as a creative device that makes it look really cool um, to, that people would want to walk down uh, as opposed to being a utilitarian way to get down. Right. Will do, yep. I mean, I think that we really want to make sure that we're, as we will, Sharon will certainly, is that we make sure that people in town that think about accessibility really are comfortable with this mm -hmm. design. They, they may be. I mean, my little thing about you don't need stairs if you have a ramp because it's just getting up the, getting up a level, they may not feel that way, but I think at some point we'll want to make sure that folks have had a chance to weigh in on that. Anything else on this on this on this level? Um, I, the I I was so used to the coming up the stairs and this wide open. Oh yes, yeah. Thing. We <laughs> so, uh, but again, I just want to make sure. So the teen room is imagined to have a glass wall facing the the grand stairway. Yeah. yeah, right now this is shown as glass. We have to, we have render, not professional renderings. Yeah. We, yeah. we do, you know, these snapshots okay. that um, Andrew and Josephine did from Revit. And j is this a good time, Josephine, you think? Um, we just have one more floor okay. upstairs, not much to Oh, right, you're level. right. Sorry, sorry. Yep. And then we'll jump right into the renderings. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let's go up a level. Um, Again, not too much up here at this level, but um, it's still the staff break room and the board room. Um, we did a little bit of reconfiguration here on the staff break room, but um, pretty much is taking up um, the same uh, general footprint. Uh, we sort of separated out the um, locker area and the, um, the restrooms to sort of make it a little bit more private, um, separating it from the staff break room, kitchen and um, seating area. Um, we okay. still have the connection to the elevator here, um, yep. so that all remain the same. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Sh Sharon? I, I just wanted to take a moment to be excited about the fact that that second small elevator is gone. <laughs> That's a big deal. And I, I know it was hard for you all, and but I think it's really an important thing. So thank you. Right. Paul? So a few questions. So the boardroom is available to the public through schedule, for instance. That's not exclusive to, but it's just, okay. And I'm sorry, could we go back to, uh, there are two questions. One is the staff offices, like the director's office. Where is, I didn't really notice where that was. Right here. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so that's where, that's the administrative is, office mm -hmm. suite. Yep, okay. this is the suite here. It Perfect. was shifted from this location. And could you go down one more floor, please? And I think one, one of the questions I have, maybe there's a programming thing for Sharon, is that one of the things that I always like when I walk in the library is seeing like the most recent books and, and you know the, the, the staff recommendations and stuff with your frequent loop user, you like to see what's what came in this week. Where will that be? That's in back of the gears. It's that you can okay. you know the chairs. Okay. It's okay. And Sharon, have you thought about, you know, how we are having, we tend to have um, press responders or social workers or some different people service, serving people in this space because it becomes more than a library, it's, it's community space. Will yeah, totally. So, you know, as, as was in the original building program, space for a social worker in residence is what we called it. Yeah. Um, we, we, throughout the years, we, we don't need we don't want a, a, a separate office for that. So, so it will be through, you know, furniture. We will okay. put a table so that there is uh, a place for the crest responders. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. In the in the blue to the top right, yeah. The middle area is a soft seating that's just open. Yes. Yeah. So that could be a place where library patrons mm -hmm. meet or a social worker. That's a flexible space on this floor. For meetings and discussions like that. Good. Thank you. And just as Paul, to go back to the first question you asked, um, that room on the third floor is not the boardroom, it's the Goodwin room, and it would be available as it has been. We should it's definitely change that name on the. Okay. Plans. Yeah. That's yeah. Really important, I think. Good point. Yeah, Good point. Beca because uh, it is, it will be used in the same way that is used now. And uh, the idea that it is a boardroom gives more significance to the board than the board has. It's a it's a it's it's a, a place that can be used um, by by anyone. Yeah. Good. Now, Sharon, just to be clear, really, I'm sorry to keep on that. So right now we have valuable things in that room, and so that room is locked. Uh, but I take it once we've gotten when, that room will be open. Is that well, right? it'll it'll still be locked, um, uh, just like all of our other meeting rooms. It'll be put through sure. a whole request system and calendared, and yeah, reservable. Okay, but it, so it's not a place where if I'm a patron and I want to go sit and read, that I would naturally um, migrate to. It's it's really for meetings. It'll be for meetings. Yeah. Great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So, any other questions about the third floor? Okay, you're going to show us some renderings? Yes, um, the first one will take you through to the meeting room. Uh, Great. The reading, yeah, the reading room at uh, the first floor. Oh, my um, goodness. So this is what used to be the young adult space is now the um, adult reading room. So um, we sort of um, brought in these two windows here that are mm -hmm. um, overlooking or the ESL is overlooking the space here. Um, back here is where the ESL is on the second floor. And these two windows are sort of mimicking what's happening behind us. Um, there's a couple of original windows at, at this height on the other side. Um, I don't know, Tony or Ellen, if you want to speak to this room at all, but this is what's what currently happening. Karen, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Josephine. What's in there currently? Right now, those are stacks that are seven seven right. stories high. Right, and this, and we can thank Sharon for this because she pushed us to do this, and I think it's a great idea because it's a wonderful space. 
and as we evolve it more with, you know, what kind of seating and soft seating and a mixture and, you know, there'll be some stacks in there we would recommend, but uh, we think it's a great idea and we can accommodate it. Also in this view, those arch elements that are cut out, those are also uh, windows moving up above. Oh, right. And that will admit a tremendous amount of light. This, this is going to be one of the favorite spots in the library for patrons to go, without a doubt. And um, again, just so I'll understand, this is uh, imagined to be open all the way to the back of the new addition. Yes. So it, it has this has this virtue of being kind of enclosed in the sense of when you're in that reading room or that vaulted ceiling, but also there's kind of open to the rest of the um, the new wing. Mm -hmm. Correct. And could you switch to the plan quickly, just so we can make just so that's clear there. Are, so just point out where the like the frame of the walls are, and then we can have yeah. the vista through there. Yeah. So so this is the room. Yeah. Um, the view is taken right from the center here, yeah. looking straight up, and so you're seeing that back yeah. wall there yeah. at the yeah. rear. Yep. Yeah. Paul, did you have your hand up? That was my question. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Recall> Alan. <laughs> okay, um, any questions about the rendering? Okay, so we'll um, move on to the next. Um, we wanted to sort of pull you back to the original rendering. Um, yeah. Just to remind everyone, um, just we want to show the difference of, of mm -hmm. you know, what the impact is of bringing the YA to the top floor. Yep. Um, so this is the original rendering. Yep. And so this would be um, pretty close to the same angle um, of the new view. Um, this is the glass wall of the YA that we were pointing at previously. Um, this core here is the, um, the bathroom core that we had shown. And then this, uh, this is the rest of the adult nonfiction stacks back here. So the main, um, you know, uh, portion at the front here is all the same um, as previously. Um, right. May look Can a little different because that was a professional that? rendering. Right. Sure. Can you flip to that, Josephine? Because we just want to make it clear. Because so from the end of the book stacks, could you could you just uh, show that touch on those, Josephine? From the book end stacks. of the book stacks to the right to where the stair is, that'll be essentially the same, except for, of course, there's no sawtooth. But, you know, it'll be the openness and the stair, and it'll be as light as we can make it with artificial lighting. But everything beyond the bookshelves back is that that's where the change is, young adult, and, the, and then we have to get the bathrooms in somewhere. And that's why, Sharon, we rotated the bathrooms like that, so we would get more glass. Thank you, Josephine, if you can go forward, mm -hmm. thanks. I will also say that in this view, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a dramatic change, uh, mm -hmm. no question. But the other thing that's important, so the linear skylight that runs along the edge on top of the stairs, I think this is another yeah. very important thing because not only is it going to distinguish between the new and the existing, but that source of light above the main public stair is going to draw people up. So the more we bring light in at the edges like this to help deal with, um, you know, some of the um, ability of bringing light in, I think the more important it is. And I think this view kind of speaks for itself in that regard. Uh, Paul? I thought the MBLC didn't like skylights. They hate them. But we're, <laughs> this won't be a skylight. This will be more of a, um, we have, Paul, to be honest, we're working on that because they don't want just skylights and especially in Amherst because they said no skylight in 1990 and you guys put one in and it leaked. They they tell us that all the time. <laughs> so we're working on this. It's probably going to be more. It, it, it won't. Uh, maybe more of a monitor than a yeah. than a skylight. So we're still working that out, Paul. But that's a really good point. Could I ask you a question about the ceiling? So I'm a little um, trying to remember what we've decided about ceilings. And at some meeting, there was a kind of sense that we would be seeing pipes or ductwork or something like that. Is is that not the case? So definitely still out there, yes. Um, CLT construction, um, what we're gonna do, and 
um, Craig's handy schedule that he went through at the beginning. Yeah. Um, one of the first things that we're going to be doing with you folks is reviewing the VE items, the yep. sustainability goals, just making yep. sure that we're still on track for everything that was decided on previously. And so this is really just, um, you know, us with the model that we had previously and just, you know, showing a new view that that ceiling is not necessarily um, going to remain exactly as you see it right now. Um, and I, yeah, I just think that we want to keep in mind that the, this rendering, we might have a very different look. Yes. If, if that ceiling is open, uh, as opposed to what it is you're showing now, which is this kind of wood thing that picks up the railing and, uh, it may have a very different feel to it once you mm -hmm. open up that ceiling. Alex? Yeah, I apologize. I, I didn't know we were going to be looking at this stuff tonight, so I didn't, I don't have things fresh in my head, um, and I didn't look at them before. Um, my recollection was that we had found some cost savings uh, in... Now I can't even remember what it was. We were looking at the price, <laughs> whatever it was. We found for oh, I thought it was we were in, looking at, at it was uh, in the uh, roof, right? Yeah, oh slate. yeah. Like <laughs> thank you. I can't even remember the synthetic <laughs> slate. I thought we had talked about because we had the cost savings in the slate having a reduced number of sawtooth. Am I misremembering that, or did that not happen? Because I that's I thought that was still a possibility that we were looking at. This is on Craig. Oh. Yeah, okay, sure. He can go for it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Alex, you are remembering correctly. So we had the value engineering list, um, and that total. I can't remember what the the amount was. Let's say uh, X dollars. And then at the end, when when that <clears throat> was determined that we could do a synthetic slate roof, there was like a quarter million dollars extra savings. And so then uh, this group said, okay, well, we'll figure out where to apply that sort of in the next phase. And so, yes, so there, there could be that money, that those savings could be applied to uh, a more involved, not, not the full sawtooth, but um, maybe a more involved uh, lighting from above scheme, mm -hmm. or it could be put into, um, uh, I can't remember what some of the other goals were, but, yeah, so you, you do have some savings that you can now um, dip into to make things a little bit nicer. So when when is that conversation? When did, when do we need to make that decision? So that so that will be we'll start that discussion in January. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, not part of tonight because tonight's just schematic. Correct. Right. You got right. it. You got it. And okay. I think we have I up to three meetings at which we could be discussing those topics. Okay, other, you want to show us more renderings? That was it. Okay. So uh, uh, now, so you want to take down the screen share for a minute? So any questions anybody else has about anything that we've seen in these close to final schematics? Alex. Yeah, I, thanks. I, I think I heard this, but I just want to make sure with the library director that staff staff have looked at, you've looked at, everybody, there's, you guys are happy? Staff are thrilled. Okay, great. Okay. Although they, like Austin, miss the sawtooth roof. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, unless there's an objection... Let's say you have our sign off on these schematics. Is that okay? Is everybody okay with that? Kind of unanimous consent? Great. And I just have to say how thrilling this is and how grateful we are for the innovation, the creativity of making this um, very complicated library. I mean, in terms of library design, this is a, a particularly uh, intricate, complicated, and, and, and beautiful design that you've, that you've uh, come up with. Paul? If this is an actual decision point, shouldn't there be a vote of the school building committee? Or is this just sort of like, we're nodding our heads saying, keep going, you're doing great. Well, I'm proposing that we do something which is frequently done in other bodies, which is uh, by unanimous consent, meaning everybody agrees to it. But would you like us to 
put our voices to that? Well, well, there. Unanimous consent is not an action of the committee. It's just sort of like nobody said anything. So I, I think a vote is more powerful. If I, I don't know if we needed a vote or not. If we don't need a vote, no need to vote. But I'm just saying it, it felt like somebody earlier today was saying this is a decision meeting. And if it's a it, decision it, meeting, it, the only way we act is through motions and, act and votes. Okay. Well, again, I, that, that fine. Let's just let's just vote so everybody's happy. Okay, if someone would make a, a motion that we approve uh, the the schematic designs as a basis for moving forward, and then if it was seconded, then we can have then we can have we can have a vote. I would love to be the one that makes that motion. And Paul would like be the, the one to second it. Final seconding, yes. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so we're going to vote yes or no. Yes, you approve. No, you don't. Sharon. Yes. Paul. Yes. Christine. Yes. Uh, Anika. Yes. Thank you. Alex. Yes. Uh, and Sean. Yes. Thank you. And Austin votes yes. Okay, that's fabulous. So anything else, Craig, from, uh, from you all? Nothing else. And again, the great gratitude to FAA. Just, just, just wonderful. Thank you for everything. And right. thank you, you know, Sharon and your team for all the input and we've thanked MBLC. So it's, it's, I, and it, you know what, Austin, it is a challenge on this building because of the existing building, the way it is, but we feel uh, really great about where we are. Yeah. And every time we see what it is that you've done we appreciate all the more the uh, the excellence of FAA in dealing with these complicated buildings. I mean, that's part of why you were chosen. Mm -hmm. And so it just, you know, we see it vindicated. Okay. So thank you for that. Um, all right. I, with everybody's agreement, Sean, you want to give us a financial update? Oh. Uh, so I don't have much to add. I came from a finance committee meeting, so I don't yeah. have much to add. Um, we do have one invoice. Actually, Craig, do we have a November invoice to approve? Uh, quite possibly, but it also might have might not have made it through the system. Yeah, I think I saw it in the office. From I don't have my uh, file, so I, I think we'd wait till next week to our next meeting to approve the November invoice. So okay. other than that, there's uh, no other update. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Okay, next, uh, the design subcommittee. Nothing to report. Eager to go. We're eager to go. Great. Uh, outreach, Alex? Um, just, we'll obviously be having a meeting soon so that we can talk about uh, the outreach around the bathrooms. And also, I am going to um, attend our equity, justice, and inclusion uh, committee meeting tomorrow to give them an update so we can use that group as well to help us reach out to the community Great. and also participate as, as they want to in that conversation. Terrific. Thank you, Alex. Okay. I know of no correspondence. Uh, nothing that I haven't anticipated 48 hours in advance. Next is an opportunity for public comment. Uh, we have five attendees who are grateful to all for coming. Uh, if any member of the public wishes to speak at this time, if they would signify by raising their virtual hand, that would be great. Do you repeat that, please? I just was inviting public comment. Okay. Uh, with that, I'd like to invoke the Bachman rule, which is unanimous consent for adjournment. Wait, don't do that yet. Uh, okay. Thursday, January 5th at 4.30 p.m. Can we agree to that? Uh, Thursday the 5th. Can you say that date again, Sharon? Thursday yes. the 5th of January. Uh, 
That date was was that date on Craig's schedule? No, that is not. So that would be prior to the sorry, Sharon. That would be prior to the start of the uh, design development series of meetings. So it'd be okay. Two weeks and what would our what would the agenda be? Do you expect? I would say we don't have an agenda in mind at present, but perhaps we put that in the schedule okay. and okay. closer to the date. Determine if there are things that need to be discussed, either uh, to help Michael Alexander move on to the next phase Correct. or whatnot, and then we can cancel it. But you know, we will hold that January nineteenth meeting. And then, oh, my, oh, oh, oh. so my go ahead. Well, well, again, the dates are getting confused. So Sharon just proposed the 5th of January at 4.30. Is that okay with everybody? Great. So then my next question is, would I be able to host all of these meetings that show up on Craig's milestone schedule? So it's in all of our calendars and these meetings are posted and none of you can get out of them. <laughs> what? What's the time on the, are they all 4.30 meetings? I think that's what we were assuming. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, anything else, Sharon? No, did I get a head nod? Yes, everybody likes yeah. that. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. All right, thanks everybody. And um, if we don't reconvene, we won't reconvene, but have good holidays and happy yes. Happy New Year. I think it is fair to say that the town um, has done, as a, as usual, a terrific job in assembling this building committee and uh, really grateful for the work that everybody's done and the work that we will do together. So good holidays and uh, happy, happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Take care. Bye-bye.